Hey, it's Monique from Now You're Cooking. Today we'll be making some hot and flaky paratha, also known as oil roti. This flatbread was brought to the Caribbean by way of indentured servants from the Indian subcontinent. In countries like Trinidad and Guyana, roti is hugely popular. Dalpuri and Basapshat are common varieties, as well as paratha and dosti roti. The ingredients for all are basically the same, but the techniques are different. All you need for four large paratha roti is three cups of all-purpose flour with about half cup extra for dusting, one and a quarter cup or 300 milliliters of warm water to help keep the dough soft, a mixture of a neutral oil with some room temperature butter or ghee, which is clarified butter, a bit more oil for basting the roti on the stovetop, two teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Grab a large bowl and to your flour, whisk in the baking powder and salt. Make sure your hands are nice and clean because you'll be using them a lot for this recipe. Make a small well in the center of your flour and slowly add in a little bit of the warm water at a time. Like I mentioned, it's important that you use warm or even hot water for this step because it helps the dough remain soft when kneading. You'll be struggling if you use cold water and still want a pliable dough. If you want, you could lightly oil your hands prior to mixing to prevent the dough from sticking to them too much. Obviously, I didn't listen to my own advice. Keep on mixing the dough with your hands while adding a little bit more of the water, being sure to scrape down the sides to get everything incorporated. And don't worry too much about how sticky it is because after it rests, the flour will absorb more of the water. But if you really want, you could sprinkle in a little of the extra flour that you have as you're kneading. Punching down the dough with your knuckles or folding over the dough on itself are a couple other kneading methods that really help a lot. By the end, you should have a slightly sticky or what they call a shaggy dough. It shouldn't be too overmixed or have any dry spots of flour. Form the dough into a loose ball and cover with a damp paper towel so that it doesn't dry out. Let it rest for at least 30 minutes. You'll know your dough is rested properly if it doesn't immediately spring back when you poke it with your finger. You can see how resting the dough makes a big difference with how soft and stretchy it is now. Divide the dough into four equally sized pieces. Cover the ones that aren't being worked on to keep them from drying out. Take one piece and flatten slightly into a thick disc. Coat this with that extra flour, shaking off any excess. You could also lightly dust your work surface so that the dough doesn't stick to it. Roll out the disc into a larger circle, but not as thin as the roti we'll be making a little later. Now this doesn't need to be a perfectly round circle. What we're doing right now is prepping the layers for this delicious roti as it needs to rest one more time before we cook it. Spread a thinnish layer of oil and softened butter over the surface. Now you don't have to use a mixture like I did, but I think it makes for a flakier dough. You could just use oil if you want. You could also use a combination of oil and ghee, or even oil and shortening. Then dust with a bit more flour. Layers be poppin'. Now here's the fun part. Forming the dough balls, also known as loyas. There's different ways of doing this, but I find that the folding method is the easiest to grasp. Cut a slit from the center of the circle out to the edge of the dough. Fold and roll the edge around to make a cone. When you get to the end, tuck the tail back into the center of the cone. You also want to make sure that you tuck the outer ends of the cone back into the center as well. This is going to give you that smooth shape for your dough ball and make sure that the fat remains inside to form the layers. 
Place your cone on the work surface and gently push the tip of it into the base. Repeat with the remaining three dough balls. When they're all prepped, cover with a damp paper towel and allow to rest for another 30 minutes. Now we need to shape our roti. Grab a dough ball and lightly sprinkle with flour. Use your rolling pin to shape your roti into the size of your frying pan or towel. I'll be using my crepe pan, but if anyone knows where I could buy a good quality towel in Toronto, leave me a comment down below. We're gonna be here all day if I try to get this to be a perfect circle, so that's good enough for now. The dough should be soft enough for you to fold over your hand and place on your frying pan, or you could use the rolling pin. Over medium heat, lightly grease a frying pan with oil. I found this cool oil spreader at my local discount store, but you could also use a heat resistant pastry brush or cooking spray. Your roti won't take long to cook. Keep it on one side for about 20 or 30 seconds, depending on how brown you'd like it. It also depends on how hot your pan is. Brush the top side with oil and you should start to see bubbles forming. Carefully flip over and cook for approximately 30 seconds more, brushing the second side with a little bit more oil. You may see it puff up a bit with the air that's trapped in the layers. Flip it over again and cook for a few more seconds. Now you have to clap the roti. This is what helps the layers to form and keep the roti nice and soft. You could do this with two wooden spatulas or dablas by squeezing the edges of the roti towards the center. Remove from the heat and keep covered in a clean kitchen towel until ready to serve. Another way to clap the roti is by placing the warm roti into a large covered bowl and shaking it to help release some of the air pockets. Some people even use their bare hands to clap the roti while it's hot, but I think I need to work up to that level of expertise. Making roti calls for a little bit of patience, but it's so worth it to see and taste those buttery layers. The ingredients are simple enough that you could easily make this delicious and tender side dish at home. This paratha or oil roti can be served alongside many types of curry dishes or stews. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this easy roti recipe. You could also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you haven't already. For the full recipe, check out my website at nowyourcooking.ca.